Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. And with me here in the studio, I have Pratik Sinha, founder editor of Alt News. Uh, he's 36 years old. He uh, founded and heads this fact-checking portal based in Ahmedabad. He's a, he has a background as a software engineer. He studied electronics engineering in Bangalore, worked in the United States, in Vietnam, and of course in India. In the first part of our conversation, we looked at how after Pulwama, there had been a proliferation of fake, false, disinformation, misinformation that was being used to step up the jingoism, hypernationalism. We looked at how the Bharatiya Janata Party and its troll army and its WhatsApp battalion, what they are likely to do as the elections begin. In this, the second part of our conversation, first we take a step back. What are the different kinds of misinformation and disinformation? Normally, we believe that you can be genuinely misinformed. I, I can say that, you know, I, I thought you were 32 years old, but you're actually 36 years old. I am misinformed. But I can also say that having known that you're 36 years old, I can try and spread disinformation that is you are 32 years old. It's a very, very trivial example. But I'd like you to distinguish between the different kinds of fake and false information. So, see, misinformation uh, has various objectives. Um, so, we have to look at this in two ways. Number one, uh, we have to establish that it is organized. And uh, while, uh, you know, so Alt News, I think, sets it itself apart from uh, some of the other fact-checking websites, uh, because what we have often done is like we have gone down, so let's say there's a website which is putting out misinformation or slash disinformation. We have gone down and found who's actually running the website and found whether they have any links with any party or not. It means you physically visit? Not, not physically, physically visit. visit. This, this is all internet, internet foreign things. So, so you, you know, figure out. So the, I'll give you, you go to the URL, the universal resource locator. I'll, uh, I'll give you an example of one of okay. the latest stories. There's a Facebook page called the India Eye. Okay, which, and now this uh, this pa Facebook page also is there on Namo app. So Namo app has a section called My Network, which is like a social media network, and in which certain accounts are followed automatically, which includes Mr. Modi's account himself, Ravi Shankar Prasad, all these ministers, and one of the accounts is the India Eye. Now we did a two-part story. Now uh, the first part where we showed how the India Eye puts misinformation on a regular basis, on a, literally on a uh, daily basis. And what we showed was that the India I website, uh, if you look at the IP address, for example, it belongs to a company called Silver Touch Technologies in Ahmedabad. Okay? Uh, if you look at who bought that website, it is a person called Himan Shujain, who is a full-time director of Silver Touch Technologies uh, in Ahmedabad. And what is who is Silver Touch Technologies? Silver Touch Technologies is the company which made the Narendra Modi app, which made the uh, Rashtrapati Bhavan app, and it has got plethora of government projects into the tune of crores. Now, when we spoke to uh, the CEO of this company, when we were doing the story, he said that we have got nothing to do with the India. But all the links were Pointed to the contrary. Point, pointing to the contrary. So we have done multiple multiple of these stories to show that you know when uh, misinformation is put out, it is put out in an organized manner. Also, if you look at the way misinformation progresses, that is, it is always linked to current affairs. So, for example, the day when Aaj ki taza khabar. Aaj ki taza khabar. So when the the one of the first videos after the IF strike happened was this you know, this uh, video of a missile homing in on an establishment and blowing it apart, claiming that this is the IEF strike. But it was a video game. Ek dam tha. It was a video game. So, uh, these multiple... So, a game is being sort of being part of it. Yes. And, and but now, now, who are the people who are doing exactly. this? Exactly. So, now, you, uh, the fact that it is always mirroring the current affairs means that there is a there is a propaganda that is going on to create a narrative, okay? So now, so in this case, there's multiple kinds of misinformation. Number one, uh, this, you know, the, the one that mirrors uh, the current affairs where on an everyday basis, so for example, if something is said about demonetization, then, then there'll be misinformation okay. or demonetization. The second kind is, uh, you know, political parties achieve X and they want to show X plus Y. So this plus Y, 
comes in terms of fudge statistics that you know you'll see multiple bar graphs, professionally made bar graphs that are being bandied about on social media. This x, this plus y comes in form of fudge statistics. Number three, false fudged statistics. Yes. Number three is at any point in time when there's an individual who becomes a news point. So I'll give you a qu quick example like Gurmehar Kaur. She became a news point when. Uh, you know, that her slides, you know, she, she did that video and that came out uh, and it became very controversial. Immediately, a video went viral claiming that it showed a, a, a young woman dancing in a, in a SUV kind of a car and drinking and dancing and having, fr having fun with her friends. And in large parts of India, a woman drinking, drink, doing that would be looked down upon, you know, uh, because, because of the conservatism. Uh, because of the social conservatism, yes. especially in smaller towns, in rural areas. Exactly. It's only in the metros would people not think twice exactly. about it. And this person was claimed to be Gurmer Kaur. I see, I got you. Right. So, number two. Number three, uh, the third kind of misinformation uh, that is often put out is, and this is the most insidious, pernicious kind, which is the communal misinformation, the where random crimes are ascribed to uh, 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 members of the minority community, especially Muslim community. Uh, I'll give you t a couple of examples real quick. Uh, you know, recently on Dashera, there was a train tragedy in Amritsar when people had gone to see the Ravan Dahan. Where they said Navjot Siddhu's wife was present. Yes, yes, that the same one. So uh, right after that, you know, and I think 60 odd people died, right after that, a message went viral on social media saying that you don't know, but the name of the driver is Imtiaz Ali. So uh, now the, the aim was to show that that a, Mus a person of, uh, who follows uh, of Muslim origin ran over Hindu devotees on a sacred Hindu festival. Okay, and eventually the clear the purpose to incite passions, yes. to divide people on yes. religious lines. And, uh, in any case, the person, the name, the name of the person is Arvind Kumar. But in any case, even it had been Imtiaz Ali. A, a, the railway doesn't work, it's not a one person thing, you know, there's so many things which work, but in, in this case the name of the person was Arvind Kumar and this happens again and again. Okay. As we had discussed in our earlier conversation, today WhatsApp is not confined to the urban areas or the large metropolitan areas in the small towns. It is spread across rural areas. Women, young people, Children are regularly, what, again to use Ravish Kumar's famous phrase, getting educated in WhatsApp, Vishwa Vidyale. Today, we have a country of 135 crore people. According to the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, there's one crore SIM cards or subscriber identity modules. There are various estimates, some will say there are roughly 700 million mobile phones of which roughly Half are supposed to be smartphones or thereabouts. I mean, we are guests, they are not estimates. The number of WhatsApp uh, users at this point of time are in the range of 250 million. Alright. Yes, sab log, apna jo Now, this is going to be the weapon of the Bharti Janta Party, the ruling party, to influence public opinion. What can an ordinary person? What can an ordinary person who's used one, what should she or he be aware of? How to detect, how to find out what is true and what is false, what is genuine and what is propaganda? See, it, it is absolutely necessary for netizens to be self-aware in the sense that if you look at misinformation, they also try to prey on your emotional state. So again, going back to this Pulwama, post Pulwama, there's, you know, the entire country was involved, you know. Uh, even an India-Pakistan match uh, creates so much tension. Now this is a cross-border, you know, uh, thing happening. And that is the time when people are most gullible and are most likely to fall for misinformation. So, so... And they are vulnerable to propaganda. They are vulnerable to propaganda. And the messaging of misinformation is also often that generates, uh, that sort of evokes a specific extreme emotion, which is that of hatred, fear, anger. So people need to be said, and this is difficult. See, uh, I can go into what Alt News does, you know, do reverse image, etc. But, uh, but the fact is that... Reverse image search, Photoshopping technique. Yeah, but, uh, but the fact is that 
uh, you know the section of population that you are talking about number one they have nine to seven jobs nine to eight jobs they probably get a couple of hours uh, for uh, you know uh, for doing whatever whatsapp tv etc no they are not going to open the laptops Mo first of all most of them won't have a laptop at home especially the socio economic section that we are talking about and even even if they did they are not going to go to the laptop and do facebook you know do google reverse image so that's so i won't even or or, or, or find out te different techniques to this yes. has this video been manipulated as this audio track been yes. cut and pasted etc yeah. so, ah, so people are not going to have have that uh, time or the inclination to do that so at that point in time then you need to be self aware of what's happening around you if there is any information which is trying to tickle an extreme emotion of yours you always have to be circumspect because that is where have to be careful have to be circumspect yes. and not immediately forward it to everybody you know exactly because that is what they want they want to tickle a specific emotion so that you go and press that forward button as a intuitive thing you know and that is what you need to <coughs> that any time there is this kind of misinformation which is likely to create a social communal discord in the country then stop yourself and get a more well rounded perspective you cannot do reverse image search etc but at least go and google a few things see you know don't just read one website you know read multiple things look for information from multiple sources to get a well rounded perspective because the problem is also with mainstream media right uh, i we could have i mean even i mean let let's look at it even some of the mainstream media organization the leading websites the leading newspapers the leading television channels yeah. hindi english different languages some of them have been made a fool of or they fallen prey to misinformation disinformation yeah, absolutely and i can even say that there have been sections of the so called mainstream media jo kehte hain mukhya dhara mein jo log madhyam hain they have been complicit in been complicit i'll give you one example najee for example even now the you know ti published a front page story that najee Uh, you know showing the link between najid and isis and then the next day they had like a, in page 7 they had a small small thing denial that, small denial you're talking about yeah. the student of jawaharlal nehru yeah. university yes. who so we still don't know where he is where what he is, he is. Now, he's missing now that clipping is still viral it 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 doesn't stop being viral like this guy has joined isis just two days ago you know we saw that it is viral again and this is after what two years and and and, and and the same newspaper has taken down the the picture of the assets of amit shah the president of the bharatiya yeah. janata party after it was published in a newspaper and why where, where is that information from official information given to the election commission of india information in the public domain right. and uh, and uh, you know in, in in that specific article let's say they did not specify that he had gotten this from inheritance all they had to do was update the article that is the regular journalistic practice that let's say if they have gotten something wrong then they update the article and give a uh, disclaimer right but instead what they ch chose to do was take down the entire article but so but going back to my point the problem is that you know uh, let's say if we were in a different country i would have said go and look for this information on mainstream media and verify it against mainstream media but uh, in india you we can't even do that today with with even the slightest amount of confidence so then typically what i uh, tell people is that get a well rounded perspective that don't depend on just one source of information you have to look at multiple sources of information and try and find out what multiple sources okay. of information are talking about and get a well rounded perspective of anything that goes on especially things that matter things that you know you choose to vote upon you know the, the decision make the when you choose to give a vote the decisions you know the various things that you use to determine you know at least in those things you need to have a well rounded perspective i understand that alt news has some important initiatives uh, which are going to be unveiled in the coming weeks would you like to tell us a little bit about it so um, uh, one thing that is going to happen very soon is that uh, you know we are coming up with a book and it'll be uh, out for pre order very soon on amazon it's called uh, india misinformed the true story and uh, there you know instead of come looking at single single stories we'll, we'll give a whole well rounded perspective of the whole misinformation ecosystem besides that the question of how to find uh, how to find what is true what is false we are also working on an app a mobile phone app where you can 
upload images and videos and for stories which have already been fact-checked by, by us, we'll give you an instant response. So as to make it easy for you on a day-to-day -day basis, on the go you can figure out, you, you can share things from WhatsApp and figure out what whether you got something on WhatsApp is true or not. So, so that is also hopefully will be out in a month and before, I mean, the, elections. I mean, before the elections are yes. begin in the middle of April. Yeah. Okay, Prateek, thank you so much for speaking with NewsClick. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. More strength to you and your team of six or eight people who are based in Ahmedabad. You guys are doing excellent work, seminal service, I think, in countering fake news, disinformation, misinformation. And the message that's coming through from Pratik Sena is straight, sharp, succinct, and clear. Be careful. You have to be aware of what you read on WhatsApp, what you share on the social media. There are people who are being paid to emotionally excite you. There are people who are trying to influence you, your political views. Be aware, be careful.